Hello, today I'll be going over cross-site request forgery. Uh, to get a little bit more familiar with this, we'll go ahead and uh, work on our lab on this application called ELG. So we're gonna go ahead and try implement this attack. So first of all, let's go over what's cross-site request forgery. Uh, CS RF. Uh, first of all, it involves a victim, trusted site, and malicious site. Here in our example, we have uh, the browser Chrome as a victim, trusted site, the Bank of Washington, and malicious site evil.com. So, how does this work? So, when you when you're in your browser and you want to log into your bank account, you put in your credentials and the bank sees that you are validated, that you are the actual user, so it establishes a connection. And here it is, it holds an active session, so it knows that you are logged in. And every time you move through websites or through tabs, you don't have to be logging in again you just hold an active session and this is what the malicious side takes advantage of so say the you're browsing to the bank but you open a new tab and you decide to go to evil.com now what this may do the malicious side may have a hidden code here this part and you can see as soon as you just click on it you establish connection this may be triggered which is obviously uh, an attack of requesting money here it is the value the amount now the bank since you already established a trusted connection it would think that since you click on it and you already logged in it would see this as a valid action since you already logged in and you already validated that you're the user so we'll go ahead and run this script and come back with the action this will be in the case you are you go to another page this uh, script is being put in the website of the malicious site so here it is it injects ATTP requests for trusted site into the victim session so from there you can act on the behalf of the user and that is the issue with this cross-site request forgery so we'll be working on a social network application here it is how it looks you have a login email password we'll work on the attacks which uh, will work on two examples and one kind of measure which is the circuit token we will also cover the HTTP GET and POST request how are we going to work with this? we have the tech lab so this one can be accessed through this website and this is a manual uh, I can show you on the browser here called SID Labs is by SYR and for example we're working on a lab so I'll put SID Labs we'll be working on Ubuntu 16.04 now this is a pre-built by them by SID Labs so you have to actually get it because it has installed um, the websites that we're gonna be using so we're focusing on web security and here it is cross-site Here's a brief description. So on the description, you get the actual manual of how you get this done with more details. I encourage you to go over it to have a better understanding of it. A lecture by a professor of the concept behind cross-site forgery, forgery. Now this is what I was saying, the virtual machine. It's pre-built. It's called Sit Ubuntu. So you have to download this one to be able to run these projects 
So you need VirtualBox so you can run the virtual machine there. And then you can download Tit Ubuntu from Drive Backup Server. And if you want to know more information of the actual Ubuntu, here's the user manual with the passwords of the users. And this is how to set up the Sit Ubuntu on the virtual box. So this all can be found here on CYR Sit Labs. So here's the lab manual. And so we'll need the virtual box, the Sit Ubuntu pre built by them. They, they give the PDF of how to set it up and the manual which comes with more information about the seed Ubuntu now here's how it looked like so as you can see it's built by them it already has Wireshark in it and this is how it looked like this is where we'll be running our labs since they already had set up the website with the Apache server and the DNS configuration so as as I go through this lecture through this PowerPoint, I'll be changing also to the to here to the virtual machine since I have it open. I'll go here to show how it's how the process goes. So go back to the lecture. So on Firefox, we have the websites. We have two. We have the lab site, which is the social network website we have seen over here and we also have the attacker site so this is the one that malicious site where as soon as you enter it will trigger the bad code the malicious code and this is the folder so you want to go into the we're going to have to go to the directories because here's where we'll put our code that will trigger those scripts and this is the victim website so we have both and those are the URLs and they're really on the sites for lab bookmarks and we have multiple users which we will be using we'll focus mostly on Alice and Bobby but in case you want to try with other users there's more it's basically the name Bobby and then Sid Bobby same thing with all of them so first of all, let's start with the tool. So we have observing HTTP requests. So we have this tool called HTTP header live. And it's already on the site. It's already installed. So you just go to this site and this will open, this will pop up. And every time you trigger, you click on link, you make a request, it should appear here. And this is where it's gonna be useful because we're gonna try to imitate the request but to our advantage that's how we're gonna trigger the actions on behalf of the victim we have two type of requests get and post get request has the data on the URL and post has it separate so on post you don't see the data on the URL you see it on content so first of all let's start with the get request so Bobby wants to become friends with Alice, but Alice refuses to add him to uh, to her friend list. So it's a social network, so we can add people, add friends to her list. But obviously Alice doesn't want to accept add Bobby. So Bobby tries to use the CSRF attack to achieve his goal. How can we do this? So he can send Alice a URL of his malicious site. So as soon as Ali clicks on it, it would trigger the script that automatically adds Bobby to Ali's friends list. We can do this by posting on Bobby's blog. So as soon as he posts, Alice will notice it and being curious about it, she's going to click on it and it's going to trigger the script that adds Bobby as her friend. So how do we do this? We're going to create the website, a uh, simple HTML website. So as soon as Alice clicks, 
the website or visits the website added Bobby is added automatically to the list so for this to work remember like the bank you have to Alice have must have already signed in so she must have an active session that's how the browser and the server knows that it should trust that request because she already logged in so to know what to put on the website we first need to see how the adding friend works and to do this we're going to use our tool HTTP header live and so we're going to actually add someone and we're going to see the code that is triggered and we're going to modify it so it adds Bobby and making it obvious with an ad friend it's um not how it's not pretty like a browser could easily detect if someone is trying to do an action but if we use the image tag so if you hide it as an image it will be more difficult for the browser to see that it's actually an action instead of an image so so we're gonna go ahead and imitate adding a friend so here we are and we're gonna log into Bobby here we have to think about both sides Bobby and Alice the attacker and the victim so that <coughs> we can get a sense of how would the user trigger that code so here we have the user so I'll put Bobby and then I put Alice and see Bobby that's just how it is login so I've been logged in just like a social network and say I want to add Charlie since Charlie is okay with me and he has no trouble with me adding him so we will open our tool we have the code the request will appear here so as soon as I click I want to add Charlie here you go here it is so now I have successfully add Charlie and when you open this it doesn't appear it's a little bug that is on the Ubuntu so all you have to do is maximize it and you see the actual content so let's worry about this so I, as I mentioned this is a get I'm not sure what it says post here but this is a get request and you know it because the data it's on the URL so here it says the action at who friend 44 and then he has a timestamp a token so this is how you add a friend you just uh, action friend add question mark friend so you can just copy this and paste it on a index HTML so for now just focus on this top part because this will be deal with later on where do you add this index HTML if you go to your folders remember that there's a you can find it on the PowerPoint we had specified the route the pad where our folders are here VAR www CSR F and then L so here it is um, you go to computer and then you go to var www CSR F attacker and you add this um, document index.html and here I have it as I said we're gonna hide it in as an image so here's the HTML opening closing body I have a little paragraph just to show this title on the website we hide and then on the source is where we put our malicious script or action so I just copy and paste what we had seen on the header here 
if you open it then you can see it full action friend at friend but we're trying to make Alice at Bobby but how do we know what Bobby's user number is we know his is was it was 43 44 no it was 44 so you can go to more I logged out so now I can go to members so who we want to add is Bobby to Alice and if you highlight Bobby and inspect element we'll show you the Bobby's information so here it is and his user number is 43 so that means we have to use 43 instead of what the other one said of 44 why because we want Alice to add user 43 to her list even though she's not actually adding him as soon as she clicks that that link malicious link this is gonna trigger it and as you can see it's 43 so we're gonna add 43 to her list and this is done because the server already trusts that she logged in so this must be a valid uh, command uh, to run so you open the website the names so here it is this is an example with adding Alice so as soon as you click you get this get request and Alice is actually 42 but for us it was 43 Bobby so we have the website that I show you paragraph and then where we hide the script the request on the image this is how we found Bobby's number we highlighted inspect elements and it was 43 so we put the 43 there how do we get Alice to click on it we can get Bobby to post on his blog and then Alice will curiously click on it and this should trigger the, the script this is for the countermeasures this is so it doesn't allow the the forgery attack to happen but I'll take it off I had to comment it so it wouldn't allow it but I'll uncomment it so you can see how this uh, script actually runs so now I, I have to log in as Bobby because I'm gonna create that link and post so Bobby which just we want to be yeah and then see it Bobby and blocks I don't have anything so I'm gonna add one and I'm gonna put it so I already had this one called interesting interesting link and then I'll just put check check out what happened here I mean you don't want to put the name of the website because who would want to go to labataki.com so instead check out this article here and then I can just highlight and say I want to add a link and then I can copy it and I paste it okay so now it's a link yeah you just click on it thinking this is an article I want to read what is it that is so interesting I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to article just to make it this is what how how it actually gets people you just click on the link and you're not sure what's going on 
so you, you as soon as you put save it's here it is the block and now let's get into Alice Alice user so it's Alice and then see Alice you log in so here it is Alice logs in and she says oh this is an interesting article she opens it and it says check out this article so she does it it opened the malicious website and we know we're here so if we go back here you go you have successfully added Bobby as a friend even though she never triggered that add friend button it was done automatically and she didn't even have to click on the website she just click on the link and here it is Bobby Bobby has been added to her list so as soon as she got in this website say you just wanted to go back quickly because I mean you saw that it wasn't an article by that time it had already triggered this request and Bobby is already a friend of Alice so that was the first attack with the get request and you saw it was simple it just added into the website we first detected how is it that it requests a friend to be added we changed modify to our user number which we wanted Bobby to be added to Alice so we put the 43 we added an image and the browser just ran it it just read it and executed it so that's for the first get now here we have a different one this is a post request so remember um, on the get it's on the URL on the post the data is separated from the uh, from the URL so for this example we're gonna go with Bobby he's not he, he just doesn't want to add Alice he also wants to publish post Bobby's my hero in her profile we're gonna use the same tactic of using CSRF but now we're gonna do with the post post request so Bobby now sees that maybe posting will not get her posting a blog will not get Alice to see it so he now sends a message to Alice account hopefully Alice will click on it again and then it will take to malicious site but now instead of just not adding Bobby but just because that's already done but also modifying her profile that's what this is about you're actually messing with what it's on her profile information so same idea the URL will lead Alice to a malicious site to launch the attack and um, so we want to modify the profile information this is how you edit your profile and you can see it's a form so you have to put uh, the name about me brief description I'll show you right now there's more fields to fill in now how this works is a post request sent to the server the server gets it and process it and then acts on it so according to the data you gave it is gonna modify the website and what we're gonna try to do is forge an HTTP post request from the browser so let's I'll show you right now how modifying the so here we are we're in Alice and you put edit profile and you get this form this form with fields that you can put in your information and save and that will trigger the the request so this is a post so it's different from the get the get you just had the information on the link but now we're gonna have it actually separated we're gonna use use our same tool header live and same concept 
we're gonna go to Alice and we're gonna modify information so for example say Alice just want to put a description of I like books and that's it that's the only change you go down now let's open our tool as soon as I hit save it sh the request should appear here so I put save here you go it's been modified you can see I like books now we're trying to look for one that says post because that's the one that holds the data so go up here's one that's called post here it is same thing click on it remember it's it's not going to appear here so you maximize it and now you can see no data is being transmitted through the URL it's on the contents over here on the bottom but this is the place where you trigger the edit now you can see this is the link and here's the data so the token timestamp name we said Alice what the description we put I like books and access level access level we put number two number two is public and description we didn't put anything so it's empty and we're gonna have to copy this because this is how we modify the data you can get it all and copy it and paste it on a notepad now what I did is I separated by by the name and then the access level. So for example, here I could put the I like books. So this is the name of it, description, and then you have the value. So brief description equals red black and all of them have a two because there are access level two so that means they're public and that's how we got this information you modify it and as soon as you put save you're going to trigger the code and you can click on it to get the contents here and we're going to use that as a base to write our code so here it is on the bottom is where you have the important information and remember that it's separated from the URL. That's that's an easy way to know if it's a get or a post. They're in the HTTP body. So as I said here, you can separate. I think it will. I believe it makes it easier to modify our our code. And now let's get to the actual uh, JavaScript. This is what we're gonna use to modify our website so I'm gonna go ahead and comment this image you comment with exclamation mark two lines and two dashes at the end I'll move this to the very bottom because that's how much our script will be how long it will be and there it is now we'll go ahead and uncomment the JavaScript that I had here And here we have, oh, I have two functions. One that actually gets the fields and the URL. And the top one that does the post. It just gets all that information and creates a form. So, so let's start with the forge post fields. And that's why I mentioned that it would be good if it's separated. Because then you can have a better view of not missing any of the fields that you had on the website so these are the values and they're hidden so our user cannot see it we just got the token and timestamp that comes straight from our request name Alice you want to change you can change her name on the profile I just keep it the same description nothing any nothing on this location interest skills contact email phone 
All I want to do is get this message, which is Bobby is my hero, and I'll put on brief description. Everything else stays the same as it already was in here. I mean, if you see nothing here, you just add empty single quotations because there's not no value there. And this is the same. Input type, and you put hidden the name of the field, which is name, description, brief description. And then the value what actually goes in there and then you have access level like i mentioned before two for public and you get all those from the post request that we got with our tool and this is the url profile edit we had seen it and then i send those hmm, uh, parameters to post and over here on post I create the form according to the parameters. So action, this is a URL that we had found. The fields, the one we just put. So this is where we're gonna put. This is the data that we're sending. Self, and then the method post. And we append this to the current page. So then as soon as we put submit, it should run the script and here's where we actually call this process so I'll go ahead and save it so now since I commented out the image it's not gonna try add Bobby it's just gonna try and modify this data for profile and say Bobby is my hero everything else will be empty and again how do we make Alice click on it um, another idea, like I've mentioned before, is we don't want her to just, maybe she will not like to press another Bobby article, <laughs> so we can put a message, because that's what happens often. You get an email, and you're just curious, so you open it. So, I mean, here. so here's Alice, we're going to send a message and I'll make it seem like something urgent so subject this is an emergency please click here to respond as soon as possible now I'll highlight this and I'll put the URL and I'll send it to so I'm in Bobby's here you can see which accounts you are I'm in Bobby's I'm gonna send it to Alice you see the link is there yeah it is and I send it to Alice now we have to go into Alice and think of how she would see the email or the message in this social network and here it is she got a message she opens it it's an emergency so we got Alice to open it so this is what it is so we got her to a message and she's gonna click it and hopefully it changes her description to Bobby is my hero so let's go ahead and open that message and you realize this is not an emergency so you go back please click here to respond I went back so now let's check what happened to actually you can already see it here brief description Bobby is my hero so there you go it actually had I like books um, so I can just change this again and say I said I like books I'll save it 
There we go. Let's open the message. Another emergency. We click. And here it is. Bobby is my hero. So this is how her profile was modified. Even though she never actually went to edit profile herself. As soon as she uh, went to that website, it triggered this. Um, that's for the post request. So we covered the get request, which comes in the URL. It's simple, it's small, but it's hidden and that's what makes it dangerous. It's, it's just an image and then the browser thinks this is an image and there's no harm in opening an image. So it opens it and actually triggered the adding Bobby to her list of friends. And then here's the modifying here profile and you can think of it as uh, social real social networks mm. someone you don't like messing with your profile making you look bad things that you never said or you never posted and that appear so this is the post request this is different because we actually have the content separated from the URL so for this post you actually need to write some actual script code and we had two functions so we got this from the header line, the name and the values and the access level, the name of Alice. So I just add you just add those into the fields. Single quotations uh, inside here, double quotation outside, and then the URL. We found that one also over here, and. Then you call the other function post. Here the parameter just get passed pass by and then you get a form. You do a pen and then you submit. And as soon as you submit it, it modifies Alice profile. So now let's cover the countermeasures. So it turns out this social network application does have countermeasures. And there's two main countermeasures which are Secret, secret token and referral. So refer. So to deal with those, I'll go ahead and undo everything I did right now, which is the profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try run that text we just did, but with the countermeasure turned on. See what happens. So for now, I'm just gonna Alice profile is good. I'm going to remove Bobby as a friend. We just put remove friend. And that's it. So I should be. I just undid everything the attack did. Here's the article, but that was posted by Bobby. I cannot control. Well, I mean, with an attack, you can control and <laughs> mess with what he posts. So, how do we do with these countermeasures? So first of all, let's go over the two main ideas. Secret token. So this idea is that the websites on the social network all have so tokens, secret tokens that only between themselves share, not share but exchange. And they're only generated within that uh, social network app. So. Websites from outside shouldn't have should don't they actually don't have these tokens because they were made specifically for this website. So they have what is called embedded secret to tokens. So when you request a post or get, you're trying to modify information, uh, you're requesting data or you're sending data, you along with all that it carries a token. And that token will cover more of it right now. It's what let the browser or the server know if he should take action on this request or not. Cross-site requests, which are websites that are not within the social network act, shouldn't, be, they don't actually don't have these tokens because they were not under the domain of the web app. So the server has an easier way to find out if the request is coming from inside the website. If 
you trust your own website but you don't you, you don't trust the other websites this is malicious website why is that malicious website suddenly trying to modify my social network application information so with this without a token as soon as you see that request does have a token it can say wait this website it does have a token so i can i would just cut off this request and i will not go further with it the other countermeasure is refer header approach so you can when you ask for when you when another website access your server there's a refer saying this is not from a website but it's from another website the one asking for the information and then comes on the headers on most of them those requests but sometimes uh, browsers or the client side cuts off that information because they don't want to mess with your privacy they don't want to be messing with who are you visiting or who are you not so we're not gonna focus much on that one since that sometimes is filtered out by the browser by the client side so we're gonna focus on the secret token because that's actually what we have implemented in this social network application on the seed lab so there's two essential parameters that make this uh, able to happen this is the timestamp and the secret token timestamp goes according to whatever time you're on and secret token is more specific so we'll go ahead and cover it here it's hash value md5 a message that you digest so there's four four fields that come up with this secret token the secret value which comes from a database a timestamp user session ID and the random generated session string so these four of them are used to create this secret token so that creates a really and then it's a hash value creates a really a specific token that you have to have and you have to match so if, even if you try making up a token secret token you have to guess all these four fields and then the hash values so that's what makes it really hard to come up with this secret security secret token um, I remember on the fields because we were we actually saw them right now here they are look so it's just it's harder to guess these uh, values and the timestamp you see it's it's numbers all from the time so this is what it is just for the secret token and timestamp is I mean time is just going on and on and it's different values all the time and okay so how do we turn on these countermeasures in our in our system I have to go to this directory uh, same one but instead of going to the attacker you go to the L, the application vendor and then you go to this to folders engine classes L, and then you go to the PHP file action service in there you're gonna find a function called gatekeeper and it this is this is how it looks like and then we comment return true if you have it uncommented that means you're letting the attackers attack you without using the without properly implementing the timestamp and the token which is what was happening right now but if we comment it then you you're not allowing them to trigger that mm, scripts without a proper timestamp and secret token so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and comment this so we can let um, the countermeasure act and prevent the attacks and we're gonna try the attacks again but with this countermeasure and we're gonna see how it reacts so obviously what we're waiting is what we're hoping is that it doesn't let you pose on behalf uh, of Alice and doesn't let you add a friend. So here's the index HTML. When, so we're gonna go to action service. Remember the um, the pad. It's here. If not, you can look at a lab manual and then you'll see it there also. But here it is. How you get to that folder. Then we look to for the file action service and for this function. So I already have it open. 
Activate X action service PHP and here's the function gatekeeper and the, and the action. So here we have return true. Since this is not commented, it means we're letting the attackers get our information. So we return true and I save it. Countermeasure is on. Uh, since I already have uncommented, I'm just going to go ahead and try first put Bobby is my hero. So if you recall, Bobby is my hero comes from the messages. And this is an emergency. So this link should try add the Bobby is my hero into Alice profile. So I click. It's not. So here it is. It tried running it, but here is what you get. The page you were using had expired. Please try again. And so it didn't. He didn't let the page acts on behalf of Alice. So now let's see if her profile shows anything. And here you go, Alice. And there's no Bobby is my hero. So that does it for the first one. Now let me try run the one with the image. So this is all the image. I am commented. Here it is. So now what this should try do is add Bobby as a friend, and that one was on the blocks. So I go here. The interesting article. I try to check out the article. Mm, nothing. So I go back, and here it is again. Trying to add Bobby as friend, but it didn't let the little HTML image trigger the adding the friend. And um, you can check Alice's friend. Here it is. Bobby is not here, so that means it wasn't able to run the the script. And that's what we got. So on both of them, we actually got. The page we were using has expired, so we didn't let them run those commands. So this was a lab with a little explanation of how cross-site forgery works. Examples of how the attacker would act and how to kind of measure. So it is a social network, but we also had the example with the bank. I mean, you could have this malicious website that doesn't add Bobby, doesn't modify your profile, but asks for money. And now, obviously, that's more damaging. Suddenly, you just check your bank account and just a thousand dollars that disappeared. So first, it was a get request, and remember, we can see how the website works by inspecting the request. It is so here you and then you can know it's a get because it has the data on the URL. You create a script so as soon as they go into the website, the script is run and the request that's what it is. It's a request, so this is a get request and adds Bobby to the and this that was a get and then the post mess with the data so you modify actually the website so this is a different type of request here we have we actually saw a sample post request by adding by modifying Alice profile so when we modified we saw how it actually the format of how you send the data and here we had it, all this long string. We just put it nicely so we can see it. We create fields. We put those fields in there and create the form, submit. And we send a message to her. She so opened it and it modified her description. Now, this is all obviously um, 
you're not familiar with the case, there was a case like this on MySpace. I encourage you to look into it because this was a real case in which it got infected. It got from like 70 friends to a million friends from infection like this. Uh, trying people opening, clicking on the on the MySpace profile, it will add automatically the friend and then not only did it added the friend but also that friend got the the request so if you click on someone who had clicked on the first victim then it would also add that victim to the malicious user so that's how it escalated pretty quickly exponential you just see all these people clicking and clicking on others and it just kept adding friends that's adding friends but also this Bobby is my hero to modify and you can pretend they said something they really didn't but as I mentioned there's countermeasures and there's a secret token and refer header this all comes with an issue with cookies the cookies keep your information so the browser has all that information so that's where we need to be careful on how that information is being sent and used by others maliciously Circuit token includes a really hash value of these four fields and a same stamp makes it harder to guess, harder to come up with. And we were able to run it and successfully avoid that attack. And I hope this presentation was useful. And that you were able to learn a bit about the cross-site request forgery was a big issue on websites and security for web apps and having into account not only when you work with it with website but also as a user avoid these attacks harming or you know, damaging people and so now we have a perspective of how the attacker thinks how we can work on it counter um, prevent it, avoid it, and how the user would think. And thank you very much for watching this video.